Come on, what's going on, church family? Come on, it is, it's Sunday. It's the best day of the week, and I just want to clear something up really quick. Before I, before I can even preach, I have to deal with this because it's in my spirit and I need to just, so, no, no, okay. Anytime Jaron Davis comes out here, I would 99% of the time tell you to listen to everything that he says. He is so wise and so smart. And even he even mentioned the marriage night coming up at the end of the month. Absolutely, you need to get involved in that. You need to register for that, for sure. But anytime he tries to get you to say, roll tide, you just say, not today, Satan. No, it's not happening. I'm just kidding. Hey, it's so good to see you in church on Sunday. What an honor it is to have you in the house. Listen, it really is my favorite day of the week for so many different reasons, but one of them is that I get to see some of the greatest people in Austin, Texas, and that is you. Thank you for taking time. Really, I'm telling you, in a, in a society today that says it's all about me and it's me first and it's what I want um, and what I need, that you would say, you know what? Sundays, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna bring my family, and we're gonna go to the house of the Lord. And I say it all the time, I just believe that you will never regret showing up to the house of the Lord. Come on, you may regret a lot of stuff that you do in life, but this is not one of them, and I honor your commitment to the Lord and to his house. And uh, Pastor Johnson, if you missed your hug from him today, he is in the Beaumont area, speaking at a former staff pastor that was on staff here with us. Um, at his church today, but he will be back in church on Wednesday, and he, he sends his love as always, and we know that he is uh, missing uh, Christian Life Austin today. But while he is gone, we are gonna start a, a two-week, not like a mini drama series. We're not, this is not Netflix. We're gonna start a mini series um, that, that I think, really, if, if we were all to be transparent, that we would all say, at different stages of our life. It doesn't hit us just at, at one stage, but I think you'll find this to be true, that different stages of your life, there is this tension that you feel with the topic that we're gonna lean into today. And it, it is, truthfully, it's a topic that, that I hear asked about a lot, that I get this question quite frequently. Um, and I think the reason that I get the question about this topic, yeah, I know I'm, you're like, what is he talking about? Just stay with me, we're gonna get there, I promise. But the answer to this question seems extremely elusive at times. It seems difficult to really put your finger on the answer to this, and, and you hear us uh, really almost on a weekly basis, we try to, to make sure that you guys know what our mission is um, as a church, and our mission statement is simply this, and it's more than a statement. We, we're, we're making it a lifestyle, and we're walking it out. Um, but we're a church that loves you where you are, and we wanna help move you because we love you so much, and we know that God loves you so much that he's got so much more in store for you than where you currently are, and that doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter if you've been following him for 30 years, he's got more for you. That's the beautiful thing about serving Jesus. So we love you right where you are, but we wanna help move you to where God wants you to be. And so we, we think that, that there's some different ways that we should go about that. So we shouldn't just have this, this statement that we're trying to walk out. I think we have to have some ways that we can identify if we are accomplishing our mission, right? We have to have something that is, that is measurable. And so here's, here's the process that we think as a church that we walk through. We want you to know God. We want you to find freedom. We want you to discover your God-given purpose. We want you to go make a difference in somebody else's life. And I think that once we start to walk along that road, you'll start to see God moving you in a direction that you're like, man, you know what? This is, this is where true joy is, and this is where peace is found. This is where I'm, I'm really happy. Um, but, but what we're gonna start talking about today is found in the third part of this process when when we, we're, we're telling you how necessary it is to discover your purpose. Discovering this calling that God has in and on my life. I wonder if you've ever spent much time asking this question, why am I here? What, why am I on this earth? 
Like, what am I called to do? What is my, what is my purpose in an age where people seem to be obsessed with chasing things like building their own brand and securing their side hustle and making a name for themselves, what I've come to discover is that chasing is not a problem. It's not a problem for us. We are good at chasing. We are good at running and running hard and running fast, but the question becomes, what are you chasing? What are you running after? This is the issue. It's not that we have a chase problem or a drive problem. No, it's a a destination. Like, what are you trying to chase becomes the issue, I believe, that we're facing today. And what, what I think some of you have come to realize and some of you that are on that chase will come to realize one day is that even if you do capture what you're chasing in the world that if you were to get your hands on it and to obtain whatever it is that you're trying to obtain, that you still on the inside long for something more than just normal success. There's this spiritual hunger, there's this spiritual craving on the inside of you to make a lasting difference in society, to do something meaningful with your life. It's because it's built into you because you are created by our heavenly father and there's this internal, this innate desire to do something meaningful with your life, this spiritual craving. And I've got good news for you because I know there's some of you in the room, some of you watching online who are saying, but Pastor Brad, you don't even know me. And I'm like, you're right, I really don't. But here's what I know about you because you're created by God. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. He's got a calling for you. He's got something, listen, this is not just fluff talk. No, God has something amazing in store for you. And I want to ask you today, what are you chasing? Are you chasing your purpose or are you chasing his purpose? Chasing, again, is not the problem. God is absolutely calling you. So if you were wondering, just go ahead and take a deep breath that God does have a call on your life and he is calling you to something significant, something greater than what you can even dream up in your mind. And I feel like today, as I was putting this together, I feel like the Lord said, Brad, today is going to be a really a purpose CPR. You're gonna kind of revive today. We're we're, we're gonna just kind of do some chest compressions on some people who have lost their purpose, who are trying to figure out what it is that they're called to do in life, and it's gotten buried on top of all these other dreams and desires, but today there's gonna be some things come forth from the inside of you that you're gonna say, you know what, that is it. I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't know exactly what it was, but it's gonna come back to life today in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it. And so today, today I wanna talk to those in the room that are driven to do something for the kingdom of God. I wanna talk to those of you in the room that say, you know what, I do feel called by God. I do have a passion and a purpose to do something with my life. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know that there's something big that God has in mind for me. There's something unique because if God's calling me, if God's got a calling on my life, then I know he's not calling me to ordinary. I know he's not calling me to average because that's not, not the kind of God he is. He's calling me to do something big for him. And if that's you, I think you're gonna walk away today saying, you know what, I know, I know where we're starting this bad boy. I know, I know how we're, we're doing this. I feel, I feel like coming back to life. I feel my, my purpose coming back. You are called by God. And if you don't believe me, let me prove it to you. Second Timothy chapter one, verse nine says, for God saved us and called us. You are called By God, God has a purpose for you. And maybe all of our purpose and this calling looks different, but maybe yours looks something like this. I was supposed to, and I I am, I have this dream in my heart and in my life that I know what my life is gonna look like. I've already got it all planned out, baby. Got it written down in my, my journal. 
This is how, this is how the next 20 years are gonna play out, and we do this. We, we have this whether we write it down or not. We've got it built into our mind. Okay, so here's how it starts. I've got this college, this specific college. This is the college that I'm gonna get into because this college has this specific uh, track that I'm gonna be on to get this certain degree, and when I get this specific degree, then I'm gonna go on to do this certain job that I've got my heart set on, and when I do that certain job, I'm gonna make lots of money, and then I'm gonna have a family, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna get married, and my spouse is gonna be amazing. She's gonna complete me. <laughs> Our marriage is gonna be perfect. We're never gonna fight or argue because we are different than every other couple in this world. I mean, it's gonna be a honeymoon all the time. And then we're gonna have children, and these children, they're gonna, I mean, they're gonna come out of the womb sleeping all night. This is, they're gonna be great. They're never gonna have problems in school. They're never gonna have issues with a friend or a family member. I mean, they are gonna, they're gonna be perfect you know, because I'm a great parent. This is how I have it planned. We're gonna do this. This is, this is and then life happens. And you don't get into the school that you thought and because th- th- you had your heart set on this school, your whole plan is ruined. And your life is messed up and you're wondering, what am I supposed to do? Like, what, what is going, I don't even know where to start now. And plug and play, yours is, yours is different than that for sure, but, but something similar to that. What if I, what if, maybe you've asked yourself this question because I know that I have and you probably have it together way better than I've ever had it together. But this is a question that, that it, during certain seasons of my life, I would ask myself, what if I miss my calling? Like, what if I don't fulfill the purpose that God has in store for my life? Like, if I'm, if I'm called by God, what am I called to do? But once I figure that out, what if I, what if I miss it? Like, I don't wanna miss the calling on my life. And I wanna lay the, the foundation here, and I'm gonna give you, like, the whole thing. Like, this would be like that part in a movie that would be like the, Oh, this is where they were going. I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of the way and I'm gonna say it a million times in the next 22 minutes that I have your attention. So I wanna make sure you hear it and you understand. Is that calling and purpose is about who you are before what you do. And I know you don't like to hear that. But stay with me today. When God calls you, he's calling you to a who before he's calling you to a do. Now watch, let me me prove it to you again. Second Timothy, we're back to the same passage of scripture. Chapter one, verse nine. It says, for God saved us and called us, but here's the rest of it. He saved us and he called us to live a holy life. What does this mean? He's calling us to a who before we ever go do anything. Let me tell you what he didn't say. And he might, but he didn't say this in this passage of scripture. He didn't say that God saved you and called you to be a missionary in a foreign country. Again, he might, but he didn't hear. And what he didn't say was he's saved you and called you to be a doctor or a salesperson. And he might. But that's not what he said here. He he didn't call us to a job or to a task. What he says is that you're saved and you're called to live a holy life. And this is where, oh, this is where we miss it. This is where you and I miss the mark so much. And this is why we're we're talking about this for the next couple of weeks, because we have a very strong tendency to put the do before the who. Like, oh, I'm gonna gonna do all this stuff. I mean, I got plans, I got dreams, I got goals. Woo, it's gonna be awesome. Awesome. but we've never done anything with the who, the who we are becoming. And Paul is saying, listen, if you're going to do something that is of significance, you're going to have to get the who before you get the do. If you don't get the who right, the do will never be sustainable. 
If you don't get the who, who you are on the inside, then whatever it is that you're called to go do next will not last and it will not be sustainable. Can I just talk to somebody in the, in the room, somebody watching online this morning and let you know that it is not your success that sets you apart. It's your inward character that sets you apart. It's the inward character, the decisions that you make day after day. Can I talk to some business leaders in the room this morning and let you know that it may be your talent that gets you through the door, but it will be your character that keeps you in the room. Your talent will take you so far, but if all you have is talent without character, you will fizzle out and you will be what a has been. And people will say, man, where is that person that, man, I know they were talented and they just, but. I got one more for you. Society today believes that character can be developed in a microwave. <laughs> Let me just hear, just 30 seconds. Oh yeah, I'm ready, let's go. <laughs> can I tell you that character is never developed in a microwave? Character is developed in a crock pot. <laughs> Woo! Your character is not developed in a microwave. It's developed in a crock pot. Have you ever had food in a microwave? I have children, and when mama gone, daddy uses the microwave. Don't tell her. Shoot, she's over there. Jesus. You know how food comes out in the microwave? Is this, is this beef jerky? What? What? No. It's tough. It doesn't taste good. It loses its flavor. Oh, oh, it, it got there quick, but it has no sustenance to it. It has nothing of, of taste. It has nothing of value. In fact, it's lost everything that it was supposed to have. But on the other side, I want you, oh, baby, we got to make something in the, in the crock pot this week. I'm, I've got myself worked up an appetite. Have you ever made something in the crock pot? If you have it, you gotta try it. You put it, cause see, you put it on before you go to work cause y'all get up real early cause you're hard workers. We're chasing, going hard. Get up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. You put in, I don't know what you put in. Let's, let's get you hungry. It's almost lunchtime. Oh, it's 1144, it's real close. Oh Lord. Some of y'all gonna get up and walk out when I start talking about this meal. Going to Luby's, baby, here we go. You put you pot roast in there. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I don't know. Maybe you want some carrots in there. I don't know what. Uh, pot roast, potato. Oh, yes, Lord. Carbs, potatoes. Bring it on. And you turn it on and you press, I don't know, seven hours. And then you just forget about it. And you go to work. And you come home. Everybody at work been crazy. But traffic, you got home and you have, you know, people have greeted you, you know, on the road so well as you're driving home and just waving at you with one finger. And then you open the door to the house. Woo! And you're just hit with something that you forgot that you didn't even expect you want. It's not even in the same room, but the smell of it just said, oh my goodness, there's something that's about to taste really, really good when I put it in my mouth. It's gonna be amazing. Can I tell you? Come on, let me tell you in the workplace that when you start developing your who and you allow your, your character to be developed in a crock pot by making the wise godly decision today and then tomorrow you do the same thing and then the next day you make the wise godly choice and you start stacking it on top of each other, you're gonna walk into your workplace and people are gonna say, what in the world just walked in the room? Like what's going, I know they're not even in the same room but there's something different about this person. 
Your talent may get you in the door, but it's your character that will sustain the calling that God has for you in your life. It's always a who you are becoming before it's a do that you're gonna go accomplish. Don't get those reversed and messed up. Your calling, your calling, your purpose, your do can never outpace your character. You ever met those people? I don't even, this is not even in my notes, Lord help me. You ever met those people that go to the gym and all they do is work on the muscles that you can see in the mirror? <laughs> you laughing because you might be one of them. <laughs> yeah, look at me. Walking into a room, your shoulders all, you, traps all bowed up. Like you can't even move. Man, and then, and then you just kind of look down a little bit. You're like, bro, you ever done a squat in your life? I'm gonna need you to just kind of put some weight back here and just do, just do something like, maybe do some lunges. I can walk up to you and just push you over and you see. Come on, can I tell you, if you don't, that's exactly how some of us view this, though, is that we, we want it to, we want all the things that everybody can see to be so good. It's what we care about, but we forget about the things that bring stability to us. If an offensive lineman lines up, like yesterday, like this is Texas and Oklahoma, perfect example. <laughs> just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Lord Jesus, no, no, no. I got a lot of Oklahoma people that I love so dearly. But if one of these people that has not worked their legs out, that is an offensive lineman, that is supposed to set the tone for how, how the game's gonna go, they get up and they line up and they go head to head with the defensive lineman that has been working out their entire body. They've allowed everything to develop properly instead of caring about just what everybody can see. When they go head to head and are faced with the challenges of life, it's going to sustain them through the battle. And can I tell you, if you allow your character to develop and you're not worried about everything that everyone can see, but you work on things that people can't see, when life hits you, the ups and the downs, you are going to be sustained because your character can set the tone for your calling. Your calling can never outpace your character. Following Jesus, we're called to live a holy life is what scripture just told us. In the, in the original language, it means to be set apart, means to be different. In other words, following Jesus means that you don't act the same, you don't talk the same, you don't think the same as those that don't follow Jesus. This is what it means to be called to live a holy life, that we're not driven by the same things that people that don't follow Jesus are driven by. Calling isn't about something important that you're gonna do in the future. Purpose and calling is about your faithfulness to Jesus today. Oh, but, but what about then? What about, what about all the stuff that I wanna do? Oh, you'll get there. But if you, if you develop your who, you'll be able to go do the do, Mountain Dew. <laughs> I love this. The Apostle Paul would say something that I, I tend to think about quite often. Colossians 3 and 17 says, whatever you do, whether it's in word or deed, if you're enjoying it, if you're not enjoying it, if it comes easy to you or it's difficult for you, if it frustrates you or makes you feel good, whatever, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Whatever you do, do it as if you're doing it unto the Lord. Amen. Come on, you walk into work tomorrow, that job that was boring today, if you start doing it as if you were doing it unto the Lord, you're gonna see some more joy in it and you're gonna find some, <laughs> You're gonna find some more joy in an ordinary task because calling and purpose isn't about a unique do, but for us, it starts with the who. 
And then we do it with everything that we have as if we were doing it unto the Lord. I wanna, as we kind of get close to letting you guys go to Luby's and have some roast and <laughs> potatoes and it's still on my mind, babe. We gotta do it this week. We gotta have it this week. I wanna, I wanna show you two passages of scriptures, really two chapters um, that are just side by side, Mark chapter 10 and then the following chapter in Mark chapter 11. But in Mark 10, you'll notice uh, that there's two brothers. You're probably familiar with the story, James and John. And they're gonna, they're gonna ask Jesus for a little bit of favor. So, Lord, we need a little favor in my life because here, here's what we know. You, you've given us some insight into this, that there's coming a day very quickly when you are gonna be sitting on your throne. You are gonna be ruling and reigning. You are already the man, but there's gonna be a day when you are sitting on your throne. And you know... As your disciples, we just thought that it might be it might be awesome. I mean, it would be for us for sure. We just want to see if you feel the same way, maybe. I mean, we just want to start this conversation here, Lord. Um, if when you are ruling and reigning, if maybe I could be on your right hand, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm just... I've done a lot. I mean, I, I've been following you, Faith. And maybe he could be on your left hand. Like, like when people look at you, like on your throne, I mean, it might be, it might be pretty cool of you if, if, if I could be on one side and, and he could be on another side. So like people would think that we were pretty awesome too. I mean, like we just, can you, what, what do you think about this plan? And Jesus looks on and he, he kind of gives them this little message. He says, hey, that sounds great. I love this plan. I love this idea. If you want to be a leader, you first need to be a servant. Amen. If you, if you want to be really important, if you want to be first, then you actually need to be last. And he's teaching them that it's not about visibility. You're missing the mark. It's about having the heart of a servant. And he's teaching them that it is about who you are, not where you're positioned. Amen. And then the very next chapter, y'all, now I have to tell you that I, I can't prove this biblically, so know that, I'm not trying to prove that, but I'm just making the statement that after knowing what just happened in the chapter before, I think that these two disciples might be a perfect um, illustration for what's about to happen. And let's, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what happens here in Mark chapter 11. It's the triumphant entry. You're familiar with it. Jesus is coming into town, um, getting ready to lay his life down. People are cheering with palm branches. They're excited. That, I mean, this is the moment. The disciples they're, they're coming in. You can tell. They're like, man, this is, we've given up so much to be here. We follow Jesus. Like, he is, he is getting so much praise and um, adoration in this moment. They're, they're here. And Jesus does something in Mark chapter 11. Again, I don't know the specific disciples that he says this to, but I, I just think that they may be the perfect object lesson. As Jesus and his disciples approach Jerusalem... They came down from the towns of Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. And Jesus, he sends two of them ahead. And can you imagine what they might be thinking? Well, he's sending us ahead. We're about to go do something amazing. I mean, we're gonna go cast out some demons. Maybe there's gonna be some healings involved. Woo, he's sending two disciples ahead. Let's go. chosen us because of our leadership capabilities. And Jesus says, hey, I want you to go into that village. And as soon as you enter it, you're going to see a donkey. It's going to be tied there. No one's ever ridden that donkey. And I want you to untie the donkey. And I want you to bring it here. And if anyone asks what you're doing, just say the Lord needs it and he'll return it soon. Do what? Donkey? Like, I mean, I thought you were going to send us to go do something amazing. Like, I was ready, Lord. 
I'd been, I prayed for three minutes and I was ready to go. I'd microwave myself up. <laughs> a donkey. I'm going to go find a donkey. You, I've worked, so, I've left everything that I have and now I'm thinking that I'm going to be seen. I'm going to be visible. It's about what I'm doing and you put me on donkey duty. And the disciples were about to learn something that I think the Lord wants us to grab a hold of today. And it's, it's this concept that the size of your assignment doesn't determine the significance of your impact. The size of what God is calling you to do doesn't determine the impact that it's going to have in this world. Just like a little shepherd boy who determined in the Old Testament that there was a very small stone that was gonna take out a really, really big giant, just like the young man who brought his Lunchable to Jesus. And Jesus broke it, and he fed 5,000. Plus, the size of your assignment doesn't impact the greatness of your impact. I'm telling you, whatever you're called to do, do it with everything that you have as if you were doing it unto the Lord and you have no clue the impact that it's gonna make on society. Start with the who before the do. These two disciples had no idea that the donkey that they were on duty with, that they delivered to Jesus, was going to be the very donkey that would carry Jesus to his calling. I know it may seem like donkey duty, but do it with everything that you have as if you were doing it unto the Lord, and watch what God will do with your faithfulness. Be faithful to Jesus today, and when you're faithful, when you serve with integrity, when you love and you give generously, when you die to yourself and say, Lord, I, I lay down my life so that people can know you. I don't wanna be seen, but I want people to see you through me when it's not about you and it's more about him, when it becomes all about the one who died for you and shed his blood for you. When you realize that you're uniquely formed and you're, you're set apart to live a, a holy life, then do everything that you do for the glory of God. When you do all of this, I found this so, so to be true that you, you're... <sighs> that you don't have to find your calling. but your calling will find you. That when you say, Lord, I'm gonna take the, the simple things, I'm gonna work on becoming the who, and I'm gonna do whatever it is that I'm called to do today as if I were doing it unto you, it's amazing how things begin to open up. And doors of opportunity begin to open up. It's amazing how it will overtake you. It's why you see people that you know that you say, why in the world are you smiling doing that? That seems like the most miserable thing in the world to do. They got a smile on their face and they're just, man. Because it will overtake you. And something as meaningless as donkey duty becomes meaningful because you're doing it as if you were doing it unto the Lord. What are you called to do? What's the purpose that God has placed in your heart? You're called to a who before you're called to a do. You're called to be set apart, to live a holy life, not a perfect life. This is not a call to perfectionism. It's a call to say, you know what? I may have messed up today, but I'm gonna get back and I'm gonna get back on the right track tomorrow. A holy life, a set apart life, a life that thinks differently that acts differently, that talks differently. So one day you wake up, you've been in the crock pot a little while, and you recognize that there's someone who's in need, 
and you're called to help meet that need. There's someone who is hurting and you're called because you're becoming more like Christ in the crock pot to stop and listen to them where a month ago you had just blown right by, I ain't got time for this. But you start understanding your calling and it's not all about you and it's not all about what you're chasing out there, but it becomes about other people and how you can be a blessing to their life. You might be called right now to love a spouse who's hard to love. You might be called right now to pray for children that continue to run from the Lord. You might be called by God to confess some sin that you're dealing with in your own life and say, Lord, I need to get, I gotta get right with you. I gotta make things right, Lord. You might be called to build a business. Pastor Brad, that's not very spiritual. Jesus got pretty excited about someone who had five talents and multiplied it to 10. You build that business with integrity and with character and with faithfulness as if you were doing it unto the Lord. It starts with a who. Don't give in to what society would have you believe that it's all about the do. You will, trust me, you will go on to do amazing things in the kingdom of God. But I don't wanna be a one hit wonder. I don't wanna do something that just accomplished something great for, because of my talent and my abilities. And then I fizzle out and I'm not able to make a lasting impact because I didn't work on the who. I got so enticed by the do that my character couldn't sustain what God was calling me to do. And I've fallen over and now I have to deal with the repercussions of what all of that means. Success isn't accomplishing something big and significant in the future. Success is being faithful to Jesus today. <laughs> and then you get up and you're faithful to him tomorrow. This is crock pot living. And you get up the next day and you're faithful to him and in return, you're gonna start you're gonna start smelling the savory smell of what a life of building character and integrity looks like. I wanna finish with this passage of scripture that, man, I felt the weight of in my life, I don't know, maybe really strongly the last year or so, and I just, I wanna share it with you today. I think it's, I think it's extremely pertinent to what we're talking about. In prison and falsely accused, the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, would say this in Ephesians chapter four. I, a prisoner serving the Lord, I beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. I don't know about you, but that is, that's been my prayer. Lord, I know I'm not gonna be perfect. I know I'm gonna make mistakes, but I do know that you have saved me and you have called me to live a holy, set-apart life. And can I tell you, I know, I know that we say in, a, in the day and age that we're living in today that it's, it's hard to serve the Lord because there's just so much temptation and so much junk thrown your way. But can I tell you that you wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be born when you were born, and this time, if you weren't capable, if God couldn't give you what you needed to make it through all of this. <laughs> Say, Pastor Brad is, is living a set apart, a holy life. Is it actually doable? in today's society, and I can tell you without shadow of a doubt that it is absolutely doable, and it's not a life of perfectionism. It's not, that's not what you're called to, but you're called to get up tomorrow saying, Lord, I'm gonna do the right godly thing today. 
And then I'm gonna do it again tomorrow. And then I'm gonna do it the next day. And then before you know it, you'll see the fruits of all of that faithfulness that you've stacked on top of each other. And then doors are gonna open in those seasons and you're gonna wonder what am I called to do and you're gonna have the right door open at the right time and you're gonna walk through it and you're gonna say, Lord, is this it? And you're gonna see another door open you say, oh, this is it, Lord, okay. And you're gonna keep walking through it and now you're gonna look back 10 years into the future, you're gonna look back on your life and you're gonna say, man, I am so glad that I worked on who I was because it was those moments this sustained me for where I am today and what I'm doing today. But had I not done that, I would never be where I am today. And so I wanna pray for you today. Would you stand with me all across this room? If you're watching online, I wanna pray for you today. Maybe you're in the building and you say, Pastor Brad, I, I need that purpose I need, I need some chest compressions on my, on my purpose and on my calling. I needed the word of the Lord today. I need my purpose to be revived. I needed it to shift a little bit. If that's you, every head bowed, every eye closed, we do this. I just don't want to embarrass anybody in the house today for any reason that might be uncomfortable. I don't wanna single you out. So nobody's looking, but if that's you, would you just slip your hand heavenward? I wanna pray for you today. Yeah, wow, wonderful. Lord, I love you. I'm so grateful for this group of people today, Lord, that have said, you know what? I wanna get me right. I wanna become the person that you're calling me to be. Before I ever go do anything out there, Lord, I wanna become who you're calling me to be. I wanna work on, on living a life that is set apart. I wanna live, I wanna work on living a holy life. God, I know. I know that I'll never live a perfect life. You know me well enough, Lord, to know that I don't live a perfect life. But I can, starting today, live in a way that I've never lived before. And it starts with putting you first in every aspect of my life. And so I choose today to put you first, that I'm gonna get up tomorrow and I'm gonna put you first again. And then the next day I'm gonna put you first. God, I pray that you would bless my friends today, that when it gets difficult to do that, when they feel that tension in their life, that you would give them the strength and the courage to persevere, that they would make it through, Lord, that they, would, they wouldn't give in to microwave character building, but they would commit to the crock pot. Say, it may take me longer than everybody else, but when you're done with me, Lord, I'm gonna be an amazing finished product that's gonna last the test of time. It's gonna stand the test of time, and it's gonna be something that I can look back on and I can be so proud of what you've done in my life because you're calling us to chase a godly purpose, but it starts with the who. Be with us today. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Come on, can you put your hands together for the Lord this morning? Thank you, Jesus.